Let's talk about a female prophet who was having sex with her church members and claimed that she was God on vacation. This is the story of a woman named Malaika Oladipopu who reigned around the late 1990s and early 2000s in Lagos, Nigeria, Mushin to be precise. <laughs> This woman was said to be a prophet who ran her own church, more like her own religious congregation or her own religious cult, as we would call it, named the New Jerusalem. The church was sort of like a white garment church at the time, but it practiced differently and with a different doctrine from other white garment church. Pretty much, she was the god of her church because this woman was able to convince her followers who were unique to her that she was the Lord, our Savior, the Creator of heaven and earth, the God Almighty, the beginning and the end, the one who made everything. And so, unlike other religious cults who still worship God in heaven, this New Jerusalem group of believers were worshipping this woman, Malaika Oladipop. And so, we only have a video of her interview with this journalist. It's not like there are pictures or recordings or documents of her people or even of her other than this particular interview. Pretty much enough you know, for this popular interview video of hers, we would not have heard or known of her now. Maybe those who heard of her then would remember. But thanks to this video, we have her story to tell. During the interview, she revealed to the interviewer that she was God and that she was the creator of heaven and earth, that she created everything, that, that she only just came to earth to relax and chill and, you know, spend time with her people in motion. I mean, if this was God on vacation, I would expect him to have gone somewhere. If he wants to be in Nigeria, I'm sure there were other places that would have been a lot more conducive for him. Other than Mushin, she was born in Mushin, like she said, even in the house where she was having the interview, she claimed she was born there, that it's her father's house and now she lived there. She claimed that she also got married and lost some of her children along the way and I think her husband too but somewhere along the line she decided to you know form the New Jerusalem church of people who believed that she was actually the Lord Almighty that everyone else is serving which is quite interesting because people who remember or people who knew how she operated at church claim her Sunday services were one of a kind, that there was prayers, singing, worship, dancing, there was music. It was like a party Sunday for her and her followers. By the end of the church service, she would eventually have sex with members of her church. And it was said she also admitted it, although it wasn't stated in this particular interview video uh, articles published at the time claimed that the woman was very open about being sexual with her church members she said it's part of what she came down for you know she is supposedly god in a woman form but you know she just came for fun to have vacation that she'd not come to destroy the earth yet so when it was said that she was having this stuff with her church members people felt and saw it as normal. Maybe that is why her followers kept increasing from, you know, 500 to 1,000. And it was said around the time before her tenure ended, she had about 2,000 followers. That would have been a big deal there. And that was it. It's surprising that 2,000 people believed that she was truly God in the flesh. And what is even more funny is that they didn't see past their humanity. They just somehow believed that this woman who spoke like this, who talked like this, who really doesn't do so much, is the one who created heaven and earth. The thing is, people would believe anything. This was still around the same time as the Kanungu massacre. So that was an era where a lot of people were gullible and they would believe anyone who came to claim that they were God. However, the story of Malaika Agba was one that was short-lived. It didn't last long, most likely lasted as long as she lasted with her church members on Sundays because things did not really go well for her and her congregation slowly faded away. It did not end or crash, it just faded away and it faded because something horrible happened, something that she couldn't get away with and ended up exposing her for who she was. Now, Lani Popo Olainka Malaika had claimed that she was God, she claimed that she has the power of life and death. 
And I think that was why a lot of people patronized her church. She made them believe that she could give someone life and kill someone. And that kind of made her powerful. Now, Malaika had adopted a child, a little girl from her parents, a 12 year old girl at the time in the late 90s, in 1995, she adopted this girl from her parents uh, in uh, Ogun State or Oshun State. She had picked this girl from her parents and she had brought the, the girl to Lagos to live with her in uh, Moshin in the house. So this girl, Bosade, grew up with her. Bosade had grown up with Malaika in Malaika's house. She was sort of Malaika's daughter and people know her to be Malaika's girl. And that was it. So somewhere around 2005, Bosade developed an illness, a very serious one that was so serious that it took her life. Although Bosede's death was something that was sort of weird and it wasn't really clear how she may have died. But according to record, Malaika had taken Bosede to church and they had performed a spiritual surgery on her. Nobody knows what that spiritual surgery means. It might have meant that they were praying for her. Or it might have meant that they tried to operate on her, but it's not stated. And in the process of this spiritual surgery, Bose they gave up the ghost and died. But what Malaika did next was very suspicious. And it made it seem as though that that was not the first time she was doing such a thing. When Bose they died, Malaika took Bose they's body and secretly buried it in a cemetery. She did not inform Bose they's parents. She did not inform anyone. It was a secret burial. However, people realized that Bose they was missing and they knew she was sick. And they kept wondering, where is this girl? Where is this girl? Bosede was 25 at the time. So she was a grown-up girl that people would, would know that if she went missing, they would, it would be obvious because she would have adult friends too who would raise and ask questions. And words got around and before you know it, Malaika was called to the police station for questioning about the whereabouts of Bosede. People had accused her of doing something to her. And when Malaika came to the police station, she confessed to the police that Bosede had died and she had buried Bosede. And she was, you know, reprimanded and held for questioning because the rumors was that she had killed Bosede. Eventually, she confessed to the place she had buried Bosede in the cemetery. And Bosede's body was dug out by authorities. And her body was sent to the lab for autopsy. And all this while, her church members are hearing about what's happening. And eventually, though, the autopsy result came out to be that Bosede had a disease in her heart, some kind of bacteria lumped up in her heart and that bacteria was what killed her. The autopsy also suspected that she may have been injected with something, but they could not identify it, they could not figure out the toxicology results to prove what may have been injected in her. So, due to the autopsy result of Bosede coming out to be that she died of uh, bacteria in her heart and not some external third party, Malaika was released and set to go free. And that was basically the last we hear of Malaika. That is as far as some documentation would go. I've tried to look for more information elsewhere, but I haven't seen anything that was concrete. Although I was able to deduct that her church started fading off slowly after that incident because people said they seen her for who she was and that she was not God in heaven. The claim was that many of her church members who had come to meet her for something regarding health or life and death situation, they mostly died and when they died, she buried them secretly. And then she would lie to the vast majority that she had sent them to heaven. There was no body to prove that these people were dead and buried. She would tell them that, oh, see, okay, this guy you brought, I just sent him to heaven. He's there, he's doing some job for me. And for some reason, people fell for that bullshit. People believed her and thought this was real. And I guess that's what she has been doing to our members who have been seeking life and death situation help. Those who survived their illness, thank God for them, she would take the glory. But those who doesn't, she make them disappear to the point that nobody knows where their body was. And she was getting away with it until it came time for Bosede's own turn. And it was in Bosede's situation that people, because when Bosede died, she did the same thing to her congregation. That she had sent her daughter up to heaven to be with her, to, to fix some things, to arrange, to prepare the way, yada, yada, yada. You know, those stories that touches the left kidney. And they fell for it, only to hear that this woman had actually buried Bosede in a shallow grave. And they all thought that Bosede had gone to heaven. So that Bosede story blowing up was what kind of messed our congregation up. People started fading off. So the girl that he told her was in heaven was actually buried in a grave. Pretty much that's what she may have done to the others too. Without even informing the families of these people, that is what is the worst part of it. 
she won't inform them she will just make their body disappear and since she's claiming she is god she will tell them i've sent them up and since these people believe that she is god after they brought these people to her they have no option than to believe that their loved one who they have brought to this woman to give life has been sent to help not knowing that they have been buried secretly the story of malaika agba malaika olaika agba oladikupu <laughs> Uh, she has a lot of name. The, the story is not clear, nothing as much as what happened to her in the end. It has not been stated if she's even dead or alive. We don't know that. But I'm sure maybe she is still somewhere out there. She should be in her 70s by now or late 60s. So it would be nice to know what she's up to if her church still runs and if she still thinks she's God Almighty on vacation. I would love to know how her vacation is going and when she plans on returning back to heaven. Because we need a God to look after this country. <laughs> it is so funny to hear her story. It's quite a funny one and it's quite an interesting one that kind of reveals how a lot of people can be very gullible when it comes to people who claim that they are spiritual heads or they are religious or you know they are God. This is not the first time we've seen such a thing. So let me know your thoughts regarding the story. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, and turn the notification button should there be any new story or new video because this is not uh, one of those ones we have to update. <laughs> we might even have to update it too because I mean I need to know where Olainka or Ladi Popo or Malaika Agba is. So it would be nice to know where she is, what she's up to, if she's alive or dead, or anyone who knows her story. Feel free to inbox or let us know in the comments below because I find her story quite interesting and fascinating. That is why I decided to share. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned, stay connected to this channel, stay subscribed, and see you next time.